Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I am late today because last night I went and saw the Red Hot Chili Peppers in Atlanta. It was awesome. I haven't been to a concert in a long time, but when I was younger I watched I watched, I loved the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Didn't know a lot of their new songs, but they played a few of the ones from when I was younger and I really enjoyed myself. Good times. Okay. <laughs> now, and it was in it was in Atlanta Braves Stadium in Truist Park, by the way. It was cool. Um, check this out. Coin Paprika. Look what's how the, the performance this is my list uh, over the last 24 hours. The best performing XDC, Hedera Hashgraph, Ethereum, IOTA. Ethereum's heading towards that merge, and so the prices uh, keep appreciating. If I was betting, man, that price will crash when the actual merge happens. Keep your eyes on that. Okay, Lynette Zhang. Do I follow her? I should. Yeah, I do. War always accompanies monetary regime shifts. Got gold. China is threatening Taiwan because it knows its global power is peaking and the time to attack is soon. Is the U.S. prepared for war to come? Man, it, this whole thing feels like it all feels so staged, almost as if all these countries are working together to make a transition to this world. It, you know, this is what I've always thought. If I was running the United States of America, and I and trust you me, I could run it better than anybody in recent history. Trust me on that. If I was running this country, I would go over to Russia and to China and all these places, and I would sit down and have a face-to-face -face and say, look, I, we love our people and you love your people. We love our country and you love your country. Let's all sit down and work this thing out. And I think that things like that could easily be worked out how you go into the next hundred years. And I have to wonder if that's really what's been done and they have to do things a certain way to make this transition, scare everybody into the transition. Who knows? But that's what I would do. And these people, of course, you know, we know from experience just because they've got their Harvard degrees does not make them smart. <laughs> and that's who's running our government. Now, uh, but she says, she says, got gold. I say the same thing. I want you to watch this. This is a guy on TikTok talking about this Glint. Watch. I paid for Chipotle using real gold. In my last video, I showed how easy it is to use gold as a currency. But now I want to show you guys behind the scenes. So the first thing I had to do was actually buy gold. And yes, it's real, stored in a vault in Switzerland and allocated to me. And then I opened up a Glenn debit card, which I have right here, and I love it because it looks super cool. As you can see, I bought some gold and then spent it using the card and it was taken out of my account. So just like our ancestors thousands of years ago, I literally paid for my Chipotle using gold. And if you wanna do this too, check out Glint in the App Store. So there you go. And um, I have the link at the very top. Use my link. It's at the very top of the description of this video. I've been adding gold to my Glenn account. Check this out. Japanese Shinsei Bank has launched Bitcoin and XRP rewards programs for customers. That's a big boom right there, folks. That Things are happening. Now, um, yesterday I had um, uploaded this and John Deaton weighed in on it. I said, fun fact, before CNBC, um, before they were told to shut up about XRP or the SEC conflicts of interest, before they hired Jay Clayton, instead of holding him accountable, they believed XRP was a currency. And in this, in this clip, um, Brian Kelly says that it's a currency, right? I don't have any special insight, uh, but you know, Coinbase is a strategic partner for most coins out there. And you know, Ripple is a currency. Uh, I, I don't think, and I'm not a lawyer, but I don't think you can argue that it's uh, necessarily security at all. See, and then John Deaton says, to be honest, it bothers me how CNBC has turned its back on retail holders. I've watched Melissa, BK, Joe, Andrew, and Becky Quick for years. My God, BK showed the viewers how to acquire XRP on air. He correctly said XRP is not a security. Coinbase did list XRP, just as BK suggested. Before, before Coinbase listed XRP, it met with the SEC about listing XRP. 
and told the SEC that Coinbase and its sophisticated securities lawyers determined today's XRP is not a security and was going to list it immediately unless the SEC disagreed. Coinbase was going to request the, to, uh, to go public soon with its historic IPO. It wanted to make sure, you know, at what point does Coinbase sue the SEC? Because the SEC is now coming after Then they Then he mentions um, that, uh, that m the U.S. government wouldn't allow Alipay to buy MoneyGram for national security re reasons. Ripple was, was allowed to acquire 9% of MoneyGram and filed a disclosure from with the, from a d disclosure form with the SEC. So none of this makes any sense, including this. So I put this out. Remember this clip? Watch this. Hey, let me ask you about something that it winds up in my Twitter feed constantly. I've, I've tried to look into it and done a little research on it. There's this argument about um, an action that the SEC brought on your last day as the chair of the SEC. This was the one to go after Ripple Labs executives, the CEO, the general counsel, and others. Boy, he looks, he looks like he's in pain listening to her ask that. Kind of come after them for some sales that they had planned and whether they were up front. There has been all kinds of speculation because Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO, the general counsel have been very public and they're pushing back and fighting the SEC on this. And they've uh, done some mudslinging um, and, 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 and said that you and others at the SEC were compromised in this decision, um, that you had input that was coming in from people who are maybe Ethereum fans or others along the way. I, I get this question constantly. I just want to put it to you. What happened and, and what do you say to those accusations? Well, Becky, I'm I'm not going to comment on any pending investigation. I don't I don't think there's anything that that keeps him from commenting on a pending investigation. Uh, maybe there is, but I can assure you, there's many things around this that CNBC could be talking about. So I said I think it's time for all of social media to call them out to cover SEC versus Ripple and the John Deaton lawsuit against the SEC. Many issues involved can be covered. And the fact is, Becky Quick, you haven't looked into anything. You haven't researched anything on this. If you had, you would know it's an obvious story. And I also said this, because this is from the heart. This is true. Many, including myself, started their careers watching Squawk Box every morning, thinking they were being told the truth by journalists. You have lost the faith of your audience. American media used to have a mission to hold the powerful accountable. Do your job, CNBC, all of you. You're doing nothing but carrying a narrative for people now. It's disgusting. Speaking of carrying a narrative, here's Jim Cramer. But I would say that, look, Coinbase, look, it's a new day. It is a new day. It's a new and day. by the way, it is a it's day in which up. we got up. Actually, you know where he got that? He got that from... Um, Tom Emmer, when Tom Emmer said in that in that hearing, a new day is coming, these guys, they don't want a new day. These guys are on the side of the people that Tom Emmer's talking to, saying there's a new day coming. That's what these guys are. Uh, a non-hot CPI number and the S&P is up one and a half percent. Well, that's, buy Ethereum. that's when you buy Ethereum, right? Oh, I think that's what it says the in the Ethereum, Ethereum playbook. Yes, there buy Ethereum. So they're completely buy active. Anything. How about Dogecoin? Do you buy that? No, but no? please, it's down 99% or something from when he was on Saturday Night Live. But I'll, I'll tell you, you know who's the real best? So Jim Cramer, who is activated all the time, um, his handlers have told him that it's time to pump Ethereum, I guess. Now, this is the most interesting piece of news that came when I was on my way to Atlanta to go to um, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. This popped up. Ripple Labs interested in bankrupt lender Celsius assets, okay? says in this article, we're interested in learning about Celsius and its assets and whether any could be relevant to our business. The spokesperson said, declining to say if Ripple was interested in acquiring Celsius outright. Ripple has continued to grow exponentially throughout the recent crypto market turmoil, turmoil and is actively looking for M&A opportunities to strategically scale the company. Sounds like they, need, they want a uh, liquidity pool right there. Now, um, the, my question, the first thing that popped in my head when I saw this is if they bought the assets, would that mean that they were getting the XRP in those accounts and the flare that's coming to those accounts? That's what I was wondering. That's what perked me, me up. Just in the SEC has launched an investigation into Coinbase's staking programs. Now, folks, it sure does look like the SEC is going after anything retail related to crypto 
while they let the Black Rocks of the world come in. Asset management giant BlackRock, a week after linking up with Coinbase, has unveiled a new spot, Bitcoin Private Trust, offering direct access to the cryptocurrency for the first time. And here's the uh, BlackRock um, article. Then Barry Silbert comes in and says, spot based. And then he says, here comes Wall Street. Barry Silbert remembers CEO of Digital Currency Group. He's at the top of the stack. He's probably got his fingers in more of crypto than anyone. So he knows things. Then there's this. Then all of a sudden, uh, crypto demand pushes Schwab to launch new TF despite Bitcoin crash. They said, what crypto winner? I don't believe we're in a crypto winner, folks. I believe that we're in the, the pullback before this industry really comes on. Like, really comes on. And I'm not going to miss it for the world, folks. All right. Two more shady senators. U.S. Senators Warren and Sanders are asking key bank regulator to rescind crypto guidance. What they're trying to do is unwind what Brian Brooks did when he was at the OCC. They had their communist pick that was going to, they were trying to get in there. I don't remember her name, but she was literally, was a communist sympathizer. And luckily that didn't go in, but now whoever is there, they're getting that, they're wanting that person to rescind the good things that Brian, the pro crypto things Brian Brooks had put in motion. Um, then Jeremy Hogan had put, had done a video on the recent um, James Flan material. Check this out. Solomon couldn't help but get a zinger in. And here it is in what will be your favorite part of the brief at the bottom of page three. It's a little long but it's good. Quote, when it suited the SEC, the agency argued that the speech reflected only Hinman's personal views and disclaimed that he was speaking about SEC policy. Only after maintaining that position for nearly a year and after Judge Netford credited those representations and held that the communications about what the speech should say are not privileged, did the SEC change its story, arguing now that the speech was guidance to market participants. The SEC's real objection appears to be that Judge Netburn did not accept SEC's invitation to retreat from her findings when the SEC, apparently realizing belatedly the legal implications of its efforts to characterize the speech as a personal outside activity of Hinman, sought to put the toothpaste back in the tube and rely on self-contradictory lawyer argument to avoid the consequences of its litigation strategy. But that was not error. It was the faithful application of law to facts. The SEC's objection must be denied, close quote. And that's the big problem that the SEC is going to run into here. The evidence in the case is Hennon's deposition and sworn declaration in which he states that the speech was intended to reflect his own views. An attorney, now a year later, saying in a legal pleading that it actually reflected the, the division's opinion is meaningless. It's a nothing burger because you, the lawyer, are not a witness. And so the SEC is stuck with what Hinman said. Now, the SEC could have deposed another person at the SEC, had them say that it was the division's opinion, and that would be admissible. But apparently they didn't do that because it's not here. And so the SEC is left arguing the deliberative process privilege without there being any deliberation because there was nothing official to deliberate about other than what Hinman's personal opinion should be. And that's not going to fly because it's just the <laughs> Let me tell you what I would be feeling right now if I was Bill Hinman. You know what I'd be worried about? I'd be worried about Gary Gensler's one of those, he's one of those climbers. He's one of those guys that are that that will what we call in my part of the world, we call it better dealing you. And this guy is one of those guys that's gonna take the better deal for Gary Gensler every single time. And if I'm Bill Hinman, what I'm worried about about now is the SEC throwing me overboard. If I'm Bill Hinman, I'm talking to my attorney, and my attorney is now advising me, and I'm not communicating with these slimy folks over there, the Gary Genslers. I'm not doing anything to help him anymore. I'm out of there. Um, Stuart Alderati tweeted this yesterday, honored to be on this list. Okay, this was an, an industry list, um, and he even takes a shot at Hinman. This industry is growing globally, but in the U.S. we're stuck with innovation 
and the jobs behind it at stake. I hope everyone, yes, you too, Mr. Hinman, on this list works together to make things right. <laughs> if that's not a shot across the bow, I don't know what is. As the SEC ramps up enforcement action and Congress considers crypto bills, I wrote about some of the top policy and legal execs hired by crypto companies and VC firms who are trying to shape regulation and policy in the United States. There you go. Now, I was thinking to myself, I'm going to finish with this, folks. Here's my bombshell. for. I should have told you earlier in the video, I got a little bombshell for you. So, I was thinking to myself earlier, you know, I haven't looked, I haven't checked to see if there's any new calendars on for Gary Gensler from uh, the, his, uh, the public calendar for the ch chairman of the SEC. Turns out Gary's been busy. Gary, I said, it looks like G Gary Gensler has plenty of time for communist China, but none for over 70,000 XRP holders represented by John Deaton. This is Gary Gensler's May calendar. He met with J. Michael Evans, president and director of the Alibaba Chinese, communist Chinese controlled Alibaba group. That would be the same Alibaba that Bill Hinman take, helped to take public. That would be the same ant group as Alibaba's uh, holding company or whatever. That's the same Alibaba that tried to buy MoneyGram and the United States rejected and then Ripple came in and bought them. Same Alibaba. And Gary Gensler is meeting with Alibaba, but he's also meeting with the communist Chinese counter SEC counterpart. They call theirs the China Securities Regulatory Commission. I will bet you that the corruption in the, China, in the communist version of the SEC can e can't even begin to rival what's going on in the United States SEC. And I'll bet dimes to donuts on that. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that Gary is comfortable meeting with communist Chinese. He just can't pay any attention to 70,000, over 70,000 XRP holders that he claims to want to protect. That's his whole, that's all he wakes up thinking about is protecting investors.